traffic, hills, and a manual car. Hmm, not everybody's favorite recipe, but I'm gonna go and hunt for some hills and traffic, and hopefully after this video, you may feel a bit more confident when it comes to dealing with that combination. So I have a camera on my feet, a camera on the dials, a camera outside, and a camera on me so you can see what I'm doing. And I have a hill here, but it doesn't look like much traffic, so I'm gonna keep hunting. It's quite easy when you're moving slowly in traffic, like I am now, the real trouble is when you get into stop-start situations. And I'm in Colchester, and it's rush hour, so I'm very sure I'm gonna find some of those situations very soon. Aha, so I'm in a bit of a queue now, uphill. And what I'm gonna do as it's moving is I'm gonna use the gas and the clutch to roll forward slowly, because I'm not actually coming to a complete standstill here. And I think this is the best method if you are continuously rolling slowly. But now I've actually stopped, I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and clutch down. I'm gonna pull the handbrake up and do a handbrake start. So gas, lift the clutch to the bite point, handbrake off, and then continue. Now you notice the car in front got away from me, and that's also a very important point. If you're new to driving, and you feel like you've got to keep up with that car in front who suddenly shoots off, that's not gonna help you control the car. Firstly, you need to accept that you've got to do it at your own pace, and the car in front of you may go quite far before you start moving. If you try to rush, however, you'll most likely do something wrong, possibly stalling the car and causing yourself a lot more stress. I recommend using the gas and clutch to keep yourself rolling slowly if the traffic is rolling slowly because that saves you a lot of time doing hill starts. But don't use the gas and clutch to keep the car still. It's called riding the clutch because when you do that for long periods of time, that will overheat your clutch, causing your clutch to wear out prematurely. Another thing I recommend is use neutral because when you use neutral, you don't have to hold the clutch down then you just push the clutch down and go into gear when you want to move. Like now, for example, I'm gonna move as the traffic's starting to move. When stopping at a traffic light, such as I am now, it's better to use the handbrake because you don't want to be riding the clutch for a long period of time. And this also ensures you're not gonna roll back when you go to move away. There are other ways to move forwards without rolling back, and I'll go into them soon but the handbrake start is the most basic method and I do have a video all about that. I'll link to that video somewhere in the top right hand corner of your screen. When slowing down uphill, come off the gas and feel what the car is going to do before you start adding brake. If not, you may add too much brake too soon. If you see what the car is gonna do first, at least you know how much brake to add. And don't worry too much about going down the gears when you're focusing on braking, because that can be distracting. So in that example there, I slowed all the way down, then I went to first, then I carried on. There was not much point in doing many other gear changes than that. I find that focusing on down changing as you're slowing down often distracts from slowing down and people end up going into traffic or into queues too quickly or too slowly. What I'm trying to say is they brake too much or brake too little because they're focusing on the gears. Now I hate holding the clutch down. So what I like to do in very slow moving traffic, and I say very slow, I'm talking slower than first gear can handle. If it's slower than first gear can handle, I just coast because it's easier. I don't have to hold the clutch down. I'll put it in neutral and let the car roll at two or three miles an hour. It's not gonna cause anybody any harm and you're not going to overheat the brakes because you're going so slowly. For example at the moment I'm doing 10 so I can have the clutch up and just let the car move along in second gear. Looks like the traffic is slowing down a little bit here so I'm actually going to slow down and go to first gear but as I'm actually going to go slower than first gear can handle I'm just going to put it in neutral and come off the clutch and rest my leg. Sometimes I'll wait here 10 seconds, sometimes I'll wait here 5 seconds roughly what I did that time so I just clutch down into first and then I'll give the car a little push into neutral again, rest my left leg, and just let the car roll slowly as I finish my stop. Holding the clutch down for long periods of time is easier in terms of how much you need to remember to do, but it's a lot harder on your leg 
and it's part of what causes you stress in traffic is having to hold that clutch pedal down all that time. Once you're going fast enough, come fully off the clutch and then use the gas pedal to control your speed. Do not coast at speeds faster than five miles an hour though, because that is when you can start to have less control of your car. Also, don't coast when you're near the front of a queue. Like I'm near this roundabout now, if you can call it a roundabout, it's a bit of a mess, but I don't wanna be out of gear now because I wanna be ready to go. So now I'm in gear, ready to go, very important. Now it's my opportunity to go, I'm already ready and I can get going. When you're in a queue of traffic, you don't have to be on the ball to get moving immediately. There's no real need. You're just moving forward in a queue. But when it comes to being at a roundabout, you want to be ready to take your opportunity. Coasting in a driving test is definitely not something that's recommended, but there's good coasting and bad coasting. Bad coasting is when you're doing it at speed. If you're coasting at very low speeds, that's just a necessary part of driving. You're either gonna be coasting with the clutch down because the car can't go slower than five miles an hour with the clutch up without stalling, or you're gonna be coasting in neutral. But it's basically the same thing. It's still coasting. It's just that if you're in neutral, you're not as ready to go, which is why I say that's a roundabout or when you're near the front of a queue, make sure you're in gear ready. But if you're in a long queue and you've got a long old wait, just use neutral. You will thank me. Oh, looks like I'm gonna have to stop uphill again. Oh, maybe not. So I'll go to first gear and I'm going to use clutch control to keep myself slow if it's moving. And if it stops, I'll show you some different methods of doing hill starts. So you'll join me the next time I stop. Silver car has stopped, so I've had to stop. Well, I did a handbrake start before Another method you could do is just to try and be quick so you don't roll back much. So you go to the gas and lift the clutch up pretty quick like this. But you've got to have a lot of skill to do that. I don't recommend doing that if you're starting out because you may roll back, you may stall, or you may even have a bit of a wheel spin as you give too much gas. So I'm using gas and clutch again to control this slow moving up the hill slow movement up the hill and if you notice i'm keeping my heel up and that's important because as i keep pushing my clutch down and lifting it up if i do that with my heel down i'm going to lose my footing and if i get an opportunity to show you i will show you that later you can also use heel and toe to do a heel start so you rev the engine with the side of your foot and find a bit of bite point like that and then you just slide over to the gas that's really quite hard for most people again it's not something i recommend you do if you start out but it is enough of method you can use. It allows you to get some gas whilst you lift the clutch up while still being on the brake. So you can get some power to move forwards without rolling back. It's just like a handbrake start, but you use your foot brake instead. And it's a whole lot more tricky. It takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice to do that. When approaching a roundabout, approach slowly and early. So you've got plenty of time to have a look and make your decision. Looks like I've got a bit of a weight on my hands again, so I'll just push the clutch down, put it into neutral, and release the clutch, and sit and relax. And I would listen to the radio, but I'm making a video. Clutch down in first gear, a little bit of gas, lift the clutch to the bite point, give it a push by lifting the clutch up, and actually I can come fully off the clutch, so I will stay off the clutch now. I'm not gonna coast if I'm fast enough not to. What you can also do sometimes, just be off the pedals, and most cars will just pull you along at the bottom of the gear. I've got to slow down now because everybody's stopped. In this car, it will pull me along in, well, it will pull me along at four miles an hour in first gear and seven miles an hour in second gear. But it does vary a little bit from car to car and some cars do struggle a little bit, but most of the cars I seem to get in these days have no problem doing that. Generally, it's four to five miles an hour in first gear and seven to nine miles an hour in second gear so i can actually be off all the pedals now and the car is just gonna cruise along at four miles an hour until i press the clutch down and go to stop i'll put it in neutral so i don't have to hold the clutch down and have a little rest although to be fair it is probably good exercise holding the clutch down it's not my favorite kind of exercise it really is the most important thing not to try and keep up with the traffic in front when you're trying to get confident at dealing with traffic. It's that 
that makes you lose your confidence. It's that very thing most of the time. Take that pressure away and you will start to grow. You will start to flower and you'll get much better at controlling the car. And with time, you will get faster. But if you try to be fast before you have experience, skill and confidence, you'll probably fall over. So don't worry if you take a few more seconds. Someone might have a go at you, but just ignore them. Don't let them prevent you from developing your skills. Now I'm gonna show you why it's so important to keep your heel up as you do clutch control when you're riding the clutch up a hill, despite what people say. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my clutch down and keep my heel down. Now, whilst my heel is down, I'm gonna lift the clutch and pivot up to the bite point like so to move forwards. But quite often, you need to slow back down again, so you push the clutch back down. Now the pedal is lower, I'm gonna pivot again and then try and move forwards. The pedal is even lower now. So I'm gonna clutch back down again and I'm gonna pivot again and now I'm losing control of the clutch. And actually, I'm in a bit of trouble there. Yep, just about managed to get it going without messing it up. That's why it's so important to keep your heel up. If you keep your heel up, you can go clutch down and up as many times as you like and you don't lose your footing on the pedal. If you keep your heel down, the pedal will slide under your foot and you will lose control of the clutch. What often I see people do when they get themselves, themselves in that situation is you'll see them do this. They'll pivot like this and then clutch down and pivot again, and now they'll lose their footing, so they have to wheel their foot down like that to try and get lower. Not ideal, in fact, I nearly rolled back in the process of having to wiggle my foot like that. So I've got a very slow cue here. I will be making use of neutral quite a lot to try and help me have a nice, calm, and relaxing journey, even though it is in traffic. Also, it's really helpful to keep a bit of a distance between you and the car in front in traffic, like I have now. That way, if the car stops, you might not have to stop. You can keep moving. If you're really close to the car in front, you have to do exactly what the car in front does as they do it, which is hard. But he's stopping there now, or she, I don't know. I seem to call cars he for some reason. And I didn't need to even brake there. I, got, I think I got ready to brake, but I didn't actually press the brake. Keeping this distance is like a buffer zone. And in traffic, leave junctions clear. So when you get to a junction, just stop before it until you can get after it. And if there's a car waiting, it's always good etiquette to let at least one out. Uh, well, I wouldn't say at least one. One is probably enough to be fair. You let one go, you go. Then the car behind lets one go and then it's all fair and square. The next hill start method I'm gonna show you is hill hold assist. Not all cars have this, but a lot do these days, especially in the last five years. And what hill hold assist does is it holds the brakes for you and gives you a chance to get the clutch to the bite point and add some gas before it releases the brakes. It normally holds the brakes for approximately three seconds and it will disengage the brakes as soon as you press the gas as well which is why it's quite important that you lift the clutch up to near the bite point before you add gas or the brakes will disengage. Next opportunity I get, I'll show you that system in action. Ah, looks like I need to stop on this hill. Good, so I'll be able to show you hill hold assist. So if I come off the brake, the car won't roll back until about three seconds. There it goes, it starts to roll back now. I think it's about three seconds. I never actually timed it. It holds the brake long enough for you to get your gas and bite point without rolling back, like this. Gas and bite point, and then you go. It does disengage the brake as soon as you get the gas, but because there's so little time between you pressing gas and lifting clutch up, the car doesn't actually have time to roll back. Most of the time is from transferring your foot from the brake to the gas, but once you start pressing the gas, you're already near the bite point anyway, so you just go forwards. A good tip is to start lifting the clutch a little bit before you press the gas. So the moment you press the gas, you're at the bite point and then you go forwards instead of rolling back like this. Lifting the clutch, now gas as I'm near the bite point. Just like that. If I get another chance, I'll stop anyway. Show you again. There we go. Lifting the clutch near the bite point, bit of gas to the bite point and go. Hill hold assist is quite difficult for new drivers to master, 
The best way for a new driver to do a hill start is with the handbrakes. And you've got as long as you like to press the gas to get a bit of bike point, shush motorbike, because I'm trying to do a video, to press the gas, get a bit of bike point like that, and then take the handbrake off. Because when you are not experienced at driving, setting the gas and getting the bike point takes a while. And all the other methods I've shown you require you to do things quickly. The only other method you can do slowly is to hold the brake and lift the clutch to the bike point, then come off the brake. But as I say, not all cars can do that. So handbrake up, a little bit of gas, take a few seconds to get your gas right, take a few seconds to get a little bit of bike point and handbrake off. You know you're at the bike point because the back of the car dips down a little bit or the front of the car lifts up a little bit. Also, you can hear the engine tone go a bit deeper, which is why it's so important to press the gas first before you lift the clutch up. If you press the gas first and get the gas making noise, I'll make it quite loud so hopefully you can hear it on the microphone, and then lift the clutch to the bike point, you hear it get a bit deeper, makes it easier. If you lift the clutch up at the same time, it's hard to tell if it's your clutch changing the sound or your gas pedal changing the sound because you're changing them both at the same time. So steady gas, then when you lift the clutch, you know it's the clutch at the bite point because you know the sound gets a bit deeper. But what if you stall on a hill? Well, I'm on a hill now. Hopefully I'm gonna have to stop in this traffic and then I'm gonna stall and I'll show you what to do. Mostly though, just don't panic. So I want to get going and oh, I stalled. I didn't want to get going as a car in front, but I wanted to stall, so I just stalled it. Put your foot on the brake, put the clutch down, and restart it. Make sure you're in first gear, pull the handbrake up, the car's leaving you, doesn't matter. Gas, get the gas set, get a little bit of bite point, and then take the handbrake off. The car got very far away then, but that is normal. That's something you've got to accept. If you try and rush, you'll only probably stall again and again, and you'll get into this cycle of stalling that does sometimes uh, occur when new drivers panic and it only causes itself to happen so it's a positive feedback loop so the fact you stalled causes you to stall again now you've stalled twice you're even more likely to stall a third time now you stalled three times you're almost certainly going to stall a fourth time so you have to take your time the car in front will be leaving you you're going to feel pressure from the cars behind but brake clutch down handbrake up get the car restarted make sure you're in first and then you can do your handbrake start best to practice your handbrake start on a quiet hill not in traffic somewhere where there's no one around if you practice your handbrake starts before you go on busy roads with lots of traffic you'll be far better prepared and you'll feel more confident now, downhill traffic may seem easy, but new drivers can still find it difficult because braking downhill is often a little bit more tricky. So start braking super early, as I did just now, and always roll a little bit before you stop. Never aim to stop where you actually want to stop. Always aim to stop a bit earlier and then release the brake and let it roll. And if you're only rolling small amounts and you're in neutral, that's fine, you can do that. But if you start to go much faster than four miles an hour, five miles an hour, that would be bad coasting. You're then gonna be putting more strain on the brakes, but also because you're coasting, if you need to accelerate, you won't be able to. And once you start getting to higher speeds, having the ability to get going is a lot more important than right now when I'm stuck in a queue, not going everywhere, everywhere? Not going anywhere, I'm definitely not going everywhere. I'm not going anywhere at the moment. I'm moving a few inches at a time. So being in neutral with the clutch up and just reducing the brake to let it roll really helps. Now it's starting to get a bit faster. What I'll actually do is I'll put it into second gear, clutch down in the second gear and bring the clutch up because I'm already fast enough to use second gear. So no longer, I'm no longer coasting now. If I was gonna stay slower than that, I would have gone into first. I'm using the brake to keep it slow. I can see everybody stopping again. So I'll put the clutch down, put it into neutral, 
and come off the clutch because I can't be bothered to hold the clutch down and really gently finish the stop with the brake. I do a tiny little roll. The less you brake as you finish your stop, the smoother it's going to be. Didn't feel that stop at all. And then you can brake harder once you are completely stopped just for security. Something I want to mention is if you are going to do this method of using neutral and having the clutch up and letting it roll slowly, make sure your stop start system is deactivated. Because if your stop start system is activated, your engine may be off when you're rolling really slowly. And that can be quite dangerous, as when your engine's off, you lose brakes and you lose steering. You'll normally get to use the brakes a couple of times before the vacuum reserve is depleted, but I wouldn't chance it. Your brake pedal will become very hard and you'll have to brake very hard just to brake a small amount and your steering will get incredibly heavy, especially with modern electric power steering. If you want to make use of the stop start system, then you're gonna to have to stop, handbrake up and neutral as I am now, and then I can activate the stop start system and the engine has turned off. The only trouble with this is obviously if I wanna get going, I've gotta push the clutch down, put it in gear and get going. I can't just let it roll down the hill on its own for the really minor small starts. I mean, you could, I suppose, let it roll down the hill a little bit just by pushing the clutch down and turning the engine on. But there is another downside. In traffic, your stop start system, continuously turning your engine on and off, on and off, on and off. That can't be good for your engine. At least the way I know, or my understanding of mechanics and how engines work, that's not really very good for them. Now, although I avoid stop start systems for stop start traffic, I will use a stop start system if I'm actually waiting for a long time. I just don't think they're very good when you're continuously stopping and starting. I'm also quite aware that there's probably gonna be quite a few bad comments on this video saying, how can you listen to this guy? That's coasting, you should never coast. But coasting is a necessary part of driving. If you don't coast, you will stall. Once you get so slow that your lowest gear, first gear, cannot handle that low speed, you need the clutch down to prevent yourself from stalling. That is coasting. All I'm saying is, instead of holding the clutch down and aching your leg and making traffic stressful, put it in neutral and rest your leg. If you're moving very small amounts downhill, say less than two to three miles an hour, certainly less than five miles an hour, and you're only moving a little bit here and there, why put the clutch down and put it in gear when you're not gonna use that gear? The only advantage of having it in gear is that you're ready to go. So yes, be ready to go when you're at the front of the queue. But if you can see you've got a long queue of traffic and you're just moving a little bit at a time, there's really no problem with being in neutral. However, I must stress it is bad to coast at high speeds and you will fail your test for coasting at much more than five miles an hour. Did it for a little bit of time, it's not such a problem, but if you do it for long periods of time, you do have less control of the car because you don't have engine braking to help you control your speed. You're solely relying on the brakes, which is not the best way to do things. That in itself does require a different video. If you think this video will help you drive in traffic, on hills in a manual car, then please give it a thumbs up. And also check out my sponsors, Collingwood and Confused in the description. Collingwood are really good if you want to insure yourself on somebody's car, if you're learning to drive, because you can do so without affecting their policy, taking away some of the stresses of learning to drive with a supervisor. And it's also probably a lot cheaper than you think. Using the link in the description will give you the best deal. There is a financial benefit to you for using the link and it will also support this channel. If you're looking to insure your own car, check out confused.com. Again, using the link in the description will support this channel and I generally find confused.com come out with some of the best, near the best or the best insurance prices for most people, particularly new and inexperienced drivers. If you want to get my future videos, please subscribe. And until the next one, cheerio.